Yeah, I said that because um, I noticed that we see situations develop on the continent uh, that in the end will lead to conflict and yet uh, we don't take preemptive actions to resolve them before they turn into conflicts. And then when they turn into conflicts, we find all kinds of way to resolve them and some of them last forever and ever. So I give examples of uh, situations in certain countries that we know have the potential of turning into conflicts. Uh, we have leadership around the continent, both peers and at institutional level, and uh, we don't see them doing anything about it until it turns into situations then we have to bring the international community to come and assist us to resolve it. And therefore, my question whether we are addicted to conflicts. So, so that is a, a clear case that you've just mentioned. Uh, we know what situation is there. There are peers around him. There are other head of, heads of state. Uh, what have we really done about it? I ask the question, if we could resolve such issues in Gambia, so Gambia did not turn into such a situation, if we are trying to resolve such issues in places like Guinea-Bissau, why can't we go to Burundi and resolve such an issue now we wait until it turns into a conflict situation and then we bring in everybody to help us to try and resolve it. Yeah, I made a, I made a point that I was first deployed in uh, DRC as a commanding officer in 2004. And then I went back in 2016 which was clearly 12 years later. And I expected to see, first of all, I didn't expect to go back after 12 years. I expected the situation to have been resolved. But I went back after 12 years and I think I met a, I met a worse situation. And so I think it's a clear failure on our part. If for all these years we've been there and we've gotten the situation even worse. Because when I was there, there were just about 32 armed groups. As at the time I was leaving, there were about 130 armed groups and that is a complete failure. If we could resolve the situation in Cambodia in just about three years, with even elections taking place, why is it that it's taking us so long when we cannot resolve the problem in the DRC? That is a question that we have to ask ourselves. Why is it that the situation in Cambodia could be resolved in three years, including elections, and we can resolve a simple problem like this in the in, in DRC? Yes, like you just said, I'm a military officer. So the politics is none of my business. What is my business is conflict and how to resolve conflict. So I'm just commenting on the, the issues that I see at the bigger, uh, as bigger picture without necessarily having to go into the politics of it. But I believe that as a senior military officer, I'm also playing politics and I'm also doing politics. Hence my comments at this strategic level of the issues that I see that are difficulties for us at a higher level to resolve in order to, to, to bring these conflict situations in uh, Africa to, to an end or minimize it to the barest minimum. Um, just about a month ago, I was in a conference with the former president of Somalia. And he made a profound statement. He said that there are a lot of attempts for the UN to take over our mission. And Somalis don't want that. Because they see a clear path to having their situation resolved with the African Union handling it with resources coming from the United Nations and the international community. He tells you that uh, Africa itself has this, has a solution to its problems because we understand the culture, we understand the environment better than others coming in to help us. So if we don't have the resources now and we, have, we get the resources, I think a little bit of decision making should also be left for us to do. 
Probably that's why you're not in the end of the problem really in Somalia because there are still too much of international decisions coming because we are not providing the resources. But at least for the fact that we are providing all the men as at now helps us a little bit more in the decision making. Probably that's why you are seeing grad gradually an end to the situation in Somalia. I don't discount the contribution of the international community, not at all. But I think that they do not understand the environment like they think they do and should give those who understand the environment the opportunity like it was done in ECOWAS to resolve a situation in their region.